Hey, so a couple of real quick kind of housekeeping notes before we jump into it. The first is that I mentioned in the last video, I was not going to be putting this on YouTube. Unfortunately, I tried about 10 different websites and I just could not find one that hosts video the way YouTube does that is also free, that also hosts the amount of video that YouTube does. So I really don't see an alternative. If you know of one, please let me know. The second thing is I have a zine that I just finished. The first issue of, it's called Crammed in the Van. It is interviews with bands about touring on a limited budget with a limited fan base and how they are able to accomplish it. If that sounds like something you'd want to read, go see a band on tour because the only way to get this is to buy it uh, from merch tables of bands on tour. So if you are a band or artist and you're thinking about touring and you would like something else to add to your merch table, please let me know. You can charge whatever you want for it. You can charge nothing for it. And that's a thing you can do. Thank you. One hundred songs in however long I'll learn guitar, I'll practice hard Welcome back to 100 Songs in However Long. So nice to see you again. I hope all is well. What did you think of the theme song? I wrote it myself. Today's song was written by a wonderful man named Brad Finney. If you're a fan of the local professional wrestling circuit in Northern California, you might have known him as Bradley Rotten. If you were a fan of a certain Misfits cover band, you might have known him as The Bratitude. And if you were a fan of punk music in the Chico area from about 2003 to about 2009, you probably knew him from his one-man band, Nothing Left. Brad moved to Chico around the same time that I did. I'm trying to remember why I can't. I went there for school. I got to Chico from a one-horse town, and to me the most exciting thing I could imagine was local people playing punk music that didn't try to sound like what was on MTV at the time. I never understood why the other guys in the dorm who moved to Chico from San Leandro or somewhere would want to sit around and play Xbox when you could go see a band play music just a few blocks away. Anyway, I quickly met Brad because he was the other guy who went to every show, even if he'd never heard of the band before. And when he wasn't seeing other people playing music, he was performing, either at a local venue or busking on the street. It was probably a rare day when he spent less than six hours with a guitar in his hands. He quickly became a staple in the punk scene, and I think what is really endearing about his shows is that they barely felt like shows, so much as friends sitting around, having fun, and singing together. One thing I think is really cool about Brad is that I think the meanest thing he ever said about another band unless it was like a Nazi punk or whatever, was that it wasn't really his thing. And even then, that was a rare occurrence. He had a lot of love for all kinds of music, and it was infectious. Seeing what music and wrestling meant to him made you love it too. I haven't had many opportunities to go back to Chico since I left in 2007. I still heard from Brad here and there on social media, and we talk about things. I tried to make it to a Nothing Left show one of the last times I went back for a visit, but it didn't happen, and I honestly don't even remember why. A few months ago, he was complaining about some drama, and I tried to be there for him, because I wasn't involved, but he was a friend, and he was in a bad mood. I'm really glad I said something, because I didn't know it at the time, but that was the last interaction I had before he passed. I still don't know what happened, but I hope he knew how much he meant to us. Nothing Left didn't have fans so much as friends who happened to watch him play music. And in my book, that's way better. Anyway, Brad wrote a lot of really great music, and I'm so glad that he recorded some of it, and I'm glad that I still have the CDs that he made. This song is called Forever, and it's about how people grow apart over the years. It's not my favorite song of his, but in light of how our lives turned out, I feel like it's a song that has the most meaning to me right now. Before I play, I would love it if you would all pause the video and take a moment to call a friend who you haven't talked to in a couple of years. Just check in and see how they're doing. And if you don't want to call, you can write an email or whatever. But get in touch with them and see how they're doing and remind them that you're still friends. It's one of the most important things we can do, and we usually talk ourselves out of it. 
So please take a moment and reach out. I promise it'll be worth it and I promise this video will still be here when you get back. In this song, I tried to focus on strumming in a way that gives some notes the beat. It's harder than it looks. I also realized that sometimes I could slow down a song and I would actually prefer the way it sounded. So that's a neat discovery. Thanks to all my friends who have been helping me out with this. Thanks to Andrew. Thanks to Alex. Thanks to Annie. For some reason, all my friends have names that start with A. Take care.